All right, you're playing with the black pieces here. You're a pawn up in this end game. So I would like to know what to play with black in this position. I will quiz you on this one. Uh, we'll see who finds the best way to, to continue here. Okay, I'll give you just one minute for this quiz. Uh, it's not so difficult. So black to play, just let me know how you would continue in this game, this position, okay? <coughs> I'm not asking you to win the game, just interested in which would be the best path to go. All right, Amazin, Mega Charles Rex, Pikachu, Hacker Guru, Aditya, Tori Chess, Google Chess, all of you played what they played in the game, and um, that's not good news for you. So the winners so far Amazin, Mega Charles Rex, Titan Chess, Quacky Eric. And Roger, yeah, your move is okay, Roger, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not, we'll see, we'll see. So, RZ, you also fell into the trap, into my devilish trap, or well, devilish trap by, hey, by what? Hi, hey, Greg, how are you? Hey, is, could I take over? I just have to give somebody access to the room. Let me tell you that I, I already gave access to some people, but uh, uh, there's somebody if, I have to add. If you like, yeah, um, sure. They send go me ahead, go ahead. I'll be right. Be, be, right back. be my guest. Be my guest. <coughs> I forget how to do it. <laughs> oh, you don't remember how to do it? No, it's I'll very simple, that. I think. I yeah. Uh, you go to the, the you can do. room access, I think. Right? Yeah, we're well, oh. good. That's weird. I don't see it like I usually do. Ah, uh, maybe they have changed something in the interface. One moment. So meanwhile, Greg is looking into the technical stuff. Uh, all of you think about why did we look at this position? It looks uninteresting. Well, it. All right. Sorry, everybody. All right, you're back. All right. Sorry about the delay. No, no, no problem at all. The only bad thing is that I cannot see anymore who got it right and who got it wrong. Uh, Amazon, I know Amazon was one of the first players. So, Amazon, you're on. How did you continue with Black here? What was your choice? So, I gave you the pawn. You can just play out the moves, right? That's the great thing about this chessable interface. Exactly. Don't write it in the chat. Just play it out. Exactly. Knight c1. Uh, now the pawn is starting to run. There is some threat with knight b3, maybe. So, knight takes a4. You can play here uh, 92 and you pick up this pawn. But most probably white will make a draw here. I think white can make a draw here. They're a pawn down, but it will take quite a while for the black knight to, to attack this pawn. And also white's, white's knight can, can approach. So, okay, black keeps some chances for a win in practical uh, chess, but uh, it's probably going to be a draw. I mean, white can also go home with the king, right? And they will probably make it. The pawn structure is not ideal for black in the sense that once they take still it's difficult for them to create the pass point and so on so why did i bring up this example i should ask uh, uh, amazon amazon why didn't you play instead the move uh, a3 isn't that smarter just to run with a pass point don't you think pass point should move forward they say what about a3 you you must have thought about this aha titan chess saw this mm -hmm. exactly Exactly. So we play knight e3. This is one thing which is important for you to understand, not only in the end game, but also in the middle game, for example. Knights can dominate each other in this way. When they are placed on colors of the same, I mean, squares of the same color, this can happen. Knights can, they can dominate uh, each other. And in this case, unfortunately, black, despite being a healthy pawn up, they are completely lost here because white is simply going to pick up the knight. That's what happened in the game. Black resigned. So this is a real endgame blunder, you can say. It's a real endgame blunder. Black could make a draw in different ways, but yeah, the smartest one is to pick up a pawn in, the, in, in, in this uh, way, right? With knight c1 and knight e2. However, a3, it's a very, very bad mistake because black simply forgot the fact that uh, white can trap the knight. So, I mean, no matter what you play here, I, I mean, king d6, I can play king c4, and no way black can really uh, save themselves here. Um, yeah, something like this maybe, and knight e5, and you pick up the pawn. And yeah, practical thing that you 
defend both of them. So please, careful, this is materialism. Black wanted to keep their past gone at any cost. I can see that several of you guys wanted to do the same thing. In that way, you actually lose a game. Knights on the rim are grim. Yeah, that's a nice uh, way to put it. Of course, if there was another rank, I mean, to the right of the board, the knight would not be trapped. But uh, yeah, it's something to, to consider. I must say it's not a very, very common picture. I must say I'm much more used to the fact that when you have a bishop on d2, uh, which is what I call the magic distance, I would say that is much more uh, typical. But it's not so common to see this picture. So careful whenever you are about to save a pawn. Remember, this might actually uh, cost you something more. All right, let's have a look at our next example. A very common endgame situation when a rook fights against one or two pawns. That's what we have here. All right. This endgame between Savchenko with white pieces and Nomin Erdene playing black. So these pawns are going that way, by the way. All right. It's your move, guys. I would like to know which do you think is the best uh, way to continue with black here. Please notice that there are different ways in which you can, uh, you, you can continue here. So just try to pick one of those which are saving black. Yeah, the, the mission is to save black. One minute 30 should be uh, enough, okay? Black to play and uh, try to find a way to save themselves here, okay? So, well, I'll say this a little later. I'll just say, remember which is the topic of today's uh, lesson, okay? Which is the topic that we're speaking about today and for the two last sessions also. All right. We have some different answers here. Yeah, Titan Chess, Quacky and Mega Charles Rex, that's uh, perfectly fine. Um, awesome Owen, I wouldn't put my king in the way for my pawn though if i can avoid that and we have a little group here hacker guru little grandmaster strategic symbol charles who are tori chess and google chess who did the same thing as black in this game unfortunately that's not uh, good news this is another end game blunder okay sometimes the most natural move isn't the best choice i'm pretty sure all of you have uh, experienced that at some occasion All right. Yeah, T T Troy Boy and Alg, uh, that's a very clever idea also. Yeah, you move the king that way so that you... Um, what is the word in English? Uh, disrupt my king? No, distract my king. Yeah, uh, obstruct my king. Sorry, shoulder. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry for bad English. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six students who wanted to play king g4, protecting the pawn. And that's what uh, black played in the game. Um, and then we have some other answers here. So let's uh, listen to Troy Boy, for example. All right, uh, Troy Boy, you can show your solution here, how to play with black. All right, so notice here, Troy Boy doesn't care about his pawn on h5. Uh, black only needs one pawn to, to make a draw. So if I, if I take this pawn, you can just continue your plan. My king is very far away, right? Yeah, not so much to think about. Um, just a matter of moving the king and the pawn forwards uh, without obstructing the pawn, hopefully. Um, yeah, no way you can go wrong here, I think. One of those moves should be just fine. Okay, I can play like this maybe to, to, to just to check what you're doing. And uh, yeah, no way black can... Uh, misplay it here, right? Well, what happened, Troy Boy? I think we messed it up. Uh, White was very fortunate to, to win here. Is that so? Probably we should go a little back. Anyone who would like to, to rescue Troy Boy here? Yeah, it, it's better to... Yeah, Mega Charles Rex X King G4. And actually that makes sense because I don't have the option of rook f5 anymore. So I guess if I just try the same thing, uh, yeah, you can do king g4 as well. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess this works, right? Troy Boy, you can continue if you like. Second chance to draw with black here. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. 
So now somehow white lost the tempo in this process and you will make a draw here by one tempo. I mean, this end game is interesting because almost always it's just about one tempo in each and every occasion. All right, so this is the way in which we can make a draw here. Aha, uh -huh. that's the smartest way to just play a five, give up one of the pawns in order to run with the other pawn. But it appears that it's actually important to play king g4 here, uh -huh. uh, to win a tempo. But also, like some people were saying, you can also shoulder the white king. So, I mean, when, once you choose which is the best uh, way to go, uh, if we consider the location of the white king, it might make sense to go the other way, right? You could go this way instead. So if I try the same little trick, we will see that, uh, unfortunately, in this position, I mean, in the other position with the king on g3, we could play king e4, but now this is not possible. King e2, king e4, and king all seem winning. How, how is that, the Troy boy? King e2? I don't follow. Uh, drawing, you mean, right? Not winning. Or winning half a point. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, white cannot progress here. Their king is unfortunately obstructed by the black king. What's happened in the game? Well, the same thing that uh, some of you were saying. Uh -huh. uh, in the game, they played the move uh, king g4. In the game, they played king g4 and uh, white. Yeah, anyone. Should we ask somebody else? Uh, anyone would like to play with white here? Anyone is up for the challenge? Why to play? Titan chess. But we already had Titan chess. Uh, yeah, Mega Shorts Rex. Okay, Mega Shorts. Uh, or Little Grandmaster. Yeah, Little Grandmaster appeared here. Okay, Little Grandmaster, go for it. Show your GM class how do you win with white here. Black has just played a dreadful mistake. King g4, slowing down their counterplay. So it's uh, your move, uh, Little Grandmaster. Rook g8. Oh, but that was... Surprising. I thought it was time to approach the king. Are you sure that's the right move? Okay, Eric, Eric, you will do this instead. Okay, we'll have Eric playing with the, with the white pieces. All, all right. Yeah, once you can do this, just bring in the king. No, king first is how I refer to this idea. <coughs> all right, go for it, uh, Eric. Exactly. We bring in the king as, as far as we can. Our rook is already in the best possible place, the place behind the most dangerous pawn. I play king g3. Now I would like to put my king on f2. Eric won't let that happen. And here we have this typical little trick. Uh, you should let them... Exactly. Yeah, Eric knows about this. I must now uh, pr promote to a knight. You can use this magic distance. And uh, yeah, it's, that's exactly how the game went. And you will win this game very soon. Uh -huh. The rook pawn is the worst pawn to have in the king pawn for king rook. Because the king gets stuck. Yeah, and the knight gets stuck also. So, I mean, if, if there was an I file, I file, I could play knight I3, right, at this point. And I would most probably make a draw. But here I don't have this move. So, uh, very difficult for black to save this game. Okay, you can play this game. When I was a kid, they taught me to play like this. I give this check and I come here, some kind of pendulum uh, maneuver. So, black must go back and you can then pick up the pawn. But but yours is also fine. Aha. Uh -huh. And then you have rook h1. King g1, you can just lose a tempo here um, and you will win the game very soon, right? Something like what would it be? Anyone? Rook a7? Maybe? Or which do you think is the best path for Aha. For uh -huh. I also think so. <coughs> All right. Give check. Very nice. So now the knight is definitely doomed and white wins. Somebody is uh, saying something in the chat. Uh, but by the way, thanks guys. Today I can see that we have much nicer uh, atmosphere in the chat. Uh, you're speaking about chess only. That's very nice. So what was the question here? If the f pawn was gone, would it be a draw? No, the f pawn is not important, I think. Uh, you will always uh, win in this, uh, in this game, in this endgame. Uh, once you have these pieces like that. But it's enough just to put the king and the knight, I think, one step up, and black would probably make a draw uh, because they have more space for their, for their pieces. Anyway, back to the topic. This is what we have seen here. Black played the materialistic move, king g4, and they were duly punished, just like Eric showed us. We should just bring in the king, and in the end, we have this very nice scenario 
where we let them queen. I mean, not exactly queen. We let them promote, but thanks to the knight being on h1, another badly placed knight, right? We will win this game. How could we make a draw? Well, there are several ways, but the smartest one is just to push this pawn as soon as possible. My main line here was with king c6, but okay, it's basically the same thing. There are many ways in which you can make a draw here. Uh, one of them is just to push this pawn and we play king e3, we give up this pawn and we run with the other pawn. As you can see right now, we are obstructing their uh, king. If they play rook e8, we can simply go back. And here, definitely, we're happy to have the second pawn, else we would be lost here, I think. All right, so let's uh, continue. Remember, this is about reflexes, no? Reflex, king g4, protect the pawn, you lose the game. In the other game, a3, reflex to move the passed pawn forward, and we lose the game also. So. Careful with those reflexes. Think twice before you defend one of your pawns. All right. Let's have a look at our next example. This is a more recent game with some more pieces on the board. End games, it's not only about these uh, positions with, with few pieces. There are also pieces, end games with much more pieces. Here we have an example. It's like a late middle game, you could say. White has just played the move here. Rook h4, all right. I would like to know how you think that black should uh, cope with this uh, with this situation, some kind of French, uh, French position. So here we go. Um, I'll just give you one hint. You might not be able to equalize 100%, okay? But uh, you should simply try to do the best out of it. Even if you don't equalize, um, don't worry. The important thing is to keep the game going, you know, to get the best that you can that you can so i'll give you two minutes this time you will have a little more time this time try to find a way in which black can keep on keep up the fight here in this slightly complex position okay black to play and do the best that they can <coughs> All right, Titan Chess, uh, that's fine. Your variation is perfectly okay. Much better than what Black played in the game. Um, yeah, I can give you maybe half a point for that. Strategic Simmer, Eric, and Hacker Guru, Al, HTI Chess. That's the right spirit in any case. Yeah, that's the right spirit. All right, you passed. But Titan Chess is closer. Uh -huh. GM, JM Chess, that's also fine. Your variation, I think. Uh, there is not only one solution. There are several ways that you can play here. <laughs> and I can see that by now you're cured. Nobody's playing the game, the move that they played in the game. I think uh, so far we're doing great progress here. Okay, we have one student. I won't give any names. We have one student who has played what they played in the game. As usual, it's not uh, a success. <laughs> In this class, at least. All right. So, oh, really? Can you play that move, little grandmaster? Are you sure? Against your move, little grandmaster, I would play rook d3. Just for the record, I'll play rook d3 there. Blue ocean, I'm playing rook d3. So, Titan Chess, Troy Boy, and Pikachu, you are the ones who got very. Uh, close. Uh, Tori Chess, uh, you're on the right track, but I think you're blundering a pawn there in the end, aren't you? I'll take that rook and I'll take the pawn on f7 as well. But uh, anyway, you were very close. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, you still have the pawn, Eric. Sorry, I didn't see that. No, you don't have it anymore, right? All right, we'll see. <clears throat> nice. So let's see if we can. Oh, RZ 2018. You also found it. Yeah, Eric, you 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 have you made a good uh, conclusion there. But it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Let's listen to Pikachu. All right, Pikachu, you're on. How would you continue with Black here? Aha, Rook F F D eight. One question for you, Pikachu. Why do you choose this Rook and not the other one? What might be the difference? Uh, I chose the F rook because I wanted to give my king a bit more space. Because if right. I have the rook, then my, my king might be a bit more enclosed. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good uh, explanation. Excellent. Rook F D8, I think this is the best move. We lose a pawn now. However, we're fighting for the only open file uh, in the position. Let's have a look at, sorry, how this can continue. I did some analysis here 
Uh, I'll take your pawn. You're now a pawn down. However, all your pieces are in, are in good places. Rook h3, you can continue in different ways, but you picked the one that I thought was the strongest one. Now we're able to uh, seize the open file, but also we're able to deflect the bishop from this diagonal, which should be good for us, no? So after bishop d1, you have two choices. I'm still not completely sure which is the best one, but I think I, I lean towards the move that you said. Uh, what was your move, uh, Pikachu? Oh, rook d8. Yeah, it's, I think it's okay. It's okay. My only issue with rook d8 is that white can play rook d3. Uh, and I'm not happy to swap rooks here. Usually when we're a pawn down in the endgame, we love to keep exactly the rooks on the board, at least one pair of rooks. Uh, I'm not so happy about going for the minor piece endgame when I'm a pawn down. Uh, if I can keep the rooks, much better. So I think there is a better move. Yeah, Eric says bishop e4, Titan chess also, bishop e4. I think that's the best uh, move here, possibly. Uh, in, in this position. Bishop e4 can be played to control the d3 square, or perhaps we could also play knight e4. So we put some pressure on this pawn on, on f2. If white plays f3, well, they are running into... Well, I don't know. Could we play knight f2, maybe? But also the rook is uh, kind of a sad piece now, right? Um, yeah, I was just curious about this variation. Sh should we play knight f2 or actually... Or knight might be trapped after that. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't. So maybe something like knight e5, is that possible? Rook d3, king f6? Or am I... I think I'm losing the track here, right? Yeah, this is not a good idea. I, I think I managed to lose a whole knight here. Yeah, don't uh, listen to me. Uh, there should be a better place for this knight, right? Where would you put the knight? Anyone? Which square do you like? Oh, we're speaking about something else now. Rook eighty eight. Oh, I see. Interesting. We we just ignore the the knight. Okay, okay. Nice idea. Yeah. So if bishop c two, we have to play knight f eight, knight f six. Then yeah, I like the way I like your plan, uh, Titan chess. Yeah. Now we're ready for rook d two. You can see that the move f three it really harms white. They cannot uh, use the rook anymore. So uh, sorry, I was. Uh, are there any tactical problems? A long term with rook d eight as well. Rook eight d eight. When is that, uh, Troy boy? Do I follow your variation? I think you will have to help me there. I'm not following exactly at what uh, what moment, uh, Troy boy. Uh, when would you like to play that? Um, at the start of the puzzle. All right. Oh, so you mean if you play rook a d8, the other rook? Yeah. The only problem with that is that okay, I'll play in the same way. And once you carry out your little. Variation. Now the rook is here. So what does that mean? Yeah, maybe it doesn't mean... Oh, okay, I understand. Titan just says we give rook g3 check first. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh-huh. Like an intermediate move. So black must uh, play something like king h6. Now we take. It's a small detail, but I think it uh, definitely makes some sense because now the pawn is... Uh, I mean, the rook is, is pinned to the defense of the pawn. It's stuck, exactly. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this is a worse version of, of the whole uh, position. So if we play rook d8 instead, I mean, just for the record, so that everybody understands what we're speaking about. Now, if there is rook g3, we can simply play king f8, which is a good place for the king in any anyway. I mean, not right now, because there might be some idea with rook d7, but we will just keep to, stick to maybe to Troy, Troy's idea with rook d8, or, or maybe first we play the move knight e4, maybe. Uh, who knows? I mean, we're still in the middle of a variation here. Uh, anything can happen. Probably black does not have 100% compensation. But I would like to show you what happened in the game. Uh, what does Troy Boy say? Though instead of king g7, I guess you're speaking again about rook a d8, right? Is that so? So you want to take here and you want to play rook d8, but then I can take on f6, right? I'm netting a second pawn here. I don't think you can get away with that. So, what what was your point, uh, Troy Boy? I don't follow. If you play... Oh, you play King G7 now. Well, I'm getting confused here. <laughs> if, maybe you're right then. Yeah, maybe this is the same thing. That's what you say. But it's not the same thing, right? Because now if you don't play... If you play Rook D8, I'll play Rook D3. I'm happy to swap Rooks. And if you play the move bishop e4, I get my tempo to play rook g3. Here I would like to have the rook on e8 on so that I can play king f8. Well, that's my 
my way of seeing it. What did I miss, uh, Troy Boy? Yeah, I don't follow. Um, I was considering Rook AD8. Oh, Rook E1, White will not take the pawn. I understand. Yeah, this looks interesting for White. Oh, I understand. You're going for a sacrifice here. But I don't think this works, right? Because I can play King H7 then. Your bishop is not around. So, yeah. Anyway, like I told you, uh, both these moves are perfectly fine. It seems to me that technically it's better to go with this Rook so that the King can uh, get there. But uh, look at what happened in the game. Black played the kind of move that we shouldn't play. That's the whole topic of, of this class. Uh, they played the move King G7. So, uh, anyone, why was that a bad move, King G7? After all, they're protecting the pawn. How could that move be bad? Protecting our beloved pawns. You're right, Titan says. That's what happened in the game. Rook D3. Actually, in retro perspective, you can see that White's main threat here. It's not to take the pawn, really. White's main threat is to play rook d3 and rook g3. Black didn't notice this. And after rook d3, it's actually impossible to save them already. Black is lost in this position. They tried in the game rook h8. Anyone, what do you think White played here? Or should I make this a quiz? All right, I'll make a quiz for you so that everybody wakes up. All right, a little quiz so that everybody wakes up. Here we go. I'll give you just... One minute because it's so simple, okay? Why to play and win? Let's see who is fastest here. Don't hang that rook, Amazon. Okay, HDI chess and strategic simmer, you got it in 10 seconds. I like that. Uh, that's fast thinking. All right, Mega Charles Rex, that's right. Alg, interesting idea of Alg. Uh, but I think there is something better. I get the point, I get the point, Hacker Guru, but maybe I can play h5 there. And if you play rook g3, I'll play knight g4. Check, relying on the check on the on the h5. Maybe, I'm just saying maybe. Uh, Eric, you dropped the exchange there, careful. Troy boy, that's a very pretty move. Probably that works also, yeah. It's probably not anything wrong with, with your move. Aditya, that's a beautiful move, Aditya, but... Highly incorrect. No, I can just take the rook there and you end up a piece down. Uh, interesting idea, Kugel says. If king takes, you play rook g6. Yeah, you can have half a point for that, uh, Kugel says. Yeah, in interesting. Maybe, or, or maybe I'm being too generous there. Wow. Okay, let's listen to... We, most people got it right. So HDI chess, you're the fastest one. Please go ahead. How to uh, win here with white. Rook g3, very beautiful cooperation between the white pieces. Now I must play king e7. Rook d7, attacking the pawn. There is only one way really I can protect it with either rook. And finally, I lose everything here. Right. Knight g6, pretty simple way of, of winning the game. I don't know if there is any other way to, which would work. We had interesting suggestions here, which was Aditya's. Somebody says rook g6. That's a very poetic move, but not really necessary here. Rook g6 is also, I think, it's it's too it's too clever, no? It's it's too clever. I can take and I can go back. So don't overdo it, no. Once you have a winning advantage like here, uh, no need to play flashy moves, no. It's 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 enough just to to carry out the, the, the most obvious tactical ideas. Is there anything else that we should speak about here? Uh, okay, Troy said uh, Bishop g6. Yeah, I think your move is fine also if you if you really want to. To play it that way, I think it, it will also work. Who, who had this interesting variation with, uh, let's see, Kugel Chess. Yeah, Kugel Chess and Knight takes f7. So let's see, Kugel Chess. I think yours is fine also. If King takes, you wanted to play Rook g6. I understand your idea. I was thinking about Knight h5, but I guess you can just take and I'll take and yeah, you'll play just Knight g6. Uh, oh, all right, all right, Kugel Chess. If you like that one more than the game, uh, fair enough, but. I, I stick to the to the solution here by which most people were saying. So summing up, we had this difficult uh, situation. No, just rook g7, not knight g6. All right, we had this difficult position. White played rook h4. Black was thinking that the main threat was rook takes h6, and they duly protected the pawn. So they saved the pawn, but they lost the game. White played rook d3, and they had a very very strong attack. Please notice that somebody was saying here h5. Unfortunately, it's the same story. 
you can play here rook d3. Rook g3 is coming next. Unfortunately, uh, combined with rook f4, there is no real good way for black to defend their, their position. However, if you play it the other way around, who, who said this, by the way? Who said this? Uh, oh, my memory. Uh, rook f4 was, was uh, suggested by somebody. But here I think I can actually play in this way, knight g4. I think I have some chances of saving myself here. Maybe. Or maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at least I have some idea with f5 and so on, h4 maybe. All right. However, white wins by simply bringing up the rook. All right. So what to do here? Instead of saving the pawn and losing the game, let's lose the pawn and try to save the game. So rook f8, active defense, very important in end games. Try to bring in the pieces, avoid white's attack. All right. Let's move on. I'm afraid that the next one is well known for you, but uh, yeah, never mind. You will refresh your memory. This game is from the recent World Cup game between uh, Fedusev and uh, Karyakin. I'm pretty sure that many of you saw this game. It was a very interesting game. So you're playing with the black pieces here. I would like to know if you can find a way to defend blacks uh, slightly uh, critical position here with black pieces. Karyakin, known as one of the world's best uh, defensive players, had no issues in finding a good way to, to save the game. All right. Um, how many moves should I ask you for here? Let's see. Okay, we'll stop there. So you get uh, one minute. Uh, okay, you get two minutes, right? Black to play. And let's see if you can find the best defensive solution here for black in this slightly complicated position, okay? That's right, uh, Eric. Maybe you saw the game or you simply found very quickly the right, the right solution. I think a Titan chess, Kugel and strategic simmer, you're just giving up a pawn there. I don't think that's the right way to, to give up the pawn. But I understand your idea. Yeah, you want to play rook before next turn, right? I understand. But I'll take the pawn and... Yeah, maybe half a point for you, okay? Half a point. What else? HDI chess going for a counterattack. Interesting. Aha, little grandmaster, that's okay, but you let me bring up my king. Maybe you shouldn't do that, right? Um, what about that counterattack? We will have to check this. I guess I'll take the pawn and I play rook f1, hdi chess, the human person and star pawn. I take the pawn on c6 and I'll play rook f1. Do you really have enough counterplay there? I'm not convinced. The interesting move by Alg. Uh, Maybe I can play rook d6, Alg, against your move. Is that so? I get the point, uh, Tori Chess, you're defending your pawns, but uh, I think I have chances for, for an advantage there. We'll look into the, to this very soon. So, most people found the right solution here. Eric, Mega Charles, Hacker Guru, Pikachu, and Troy Boy. You all got it right. So, let's listen to Hacker Guru, your own Hacker how do you continue here with black pieces? Rook b4. So we don't make any effort to protect the pawn on c6. Instead, we go for a counterattack. All right, let's see first how Hacker Guru and Karyakin's variation works out. So we can see here that now white will pick up a pawn. They'll play rook c5 and black will lose the pawn on d5. However, Black has a lot of counterplay. So what's your next move here, Hacker Guru? All right. Yeah, please uh, stay to the subject in the chat, okay? A4, all right, I'll take the pawn. So white is a pawn up, but you can notice something interesting here. The pawn on h4 is very useful for 
restricting the white king. Aha, that's an interesting move. Yeah, I guess I have to play f3 then, right? And now uh, we start active defense. Aha. Uh -huh. I think it's okay. Uh, probably your solution is okay also. It's not exactly how Karyakin played, but I think it, it might work also. Aha. Uh -huh. It might work also, but we could maybe try to... Yeah, you're right, uh, JM Chess. This is not the, the main line. Um, maybe it got a little more difficult than, than we wanted. No, I'm able to perhaps advance these pawns later on if you, if you defend this pawn, for example. So, yeah, I think we can improve this variation. Okay, uh, who, who was saying this? JM Chess. All right, uh, JM Chess, you can take it from here. What would you play? I don't know. Oh, that's a that's not a good answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and never mind, never mind. I think you could play in the same way as uh, as in the game. I think you could you could continue in the same way. You can put the rook simply on a two, and after rook takes, you play a four. And it's not easy for white to to progress in these positions. Thanks to this pawn on h four, it's difficult for white to uh, to progress here. So I think this is the easiest way to to continue. After, let's say, rook a5, you can play a3. And uh, not easy at all for white to progress in this position. If the king gets closer, we can maybe play something like f5, maybe. Gain some space and see how white can uh, progress here. I mean, white would like to have their king like higher up on the board, but it's, it's simply not possible. And if they start moving their pawns, well, they will have an issue with also with, with this pawn, and if this pawn moves, black can take and play rook d2 and so on. Uh, wait, after the rook a1 variation. Okay, Megachor's uh, wreck. Uh, Rex, uh, where are we? Here. Uh, okay, you can have the pawn, uh, Megachor's Rex. <coughs> what would you like to play? All right. So you imprison the white king. We start running with the pawn. That's exactly what we looked at, right? So the, it, it was okay, everything? All right. Oh, I see, smart move, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Probably you're, that's a better way to play. Uh-huh, nice. I'm not able to play rook d8 and d5 because actually the black pawn with queen. Uh-huh, good idea, yeah. That's much simpler, definitely. Uh-huh, so maybe that's a, another way to play. Rook f1, that's a smart move. I mean, I would consider also rook a2, just to stay stay close to the pawn. Uh, but uh, yeah, rook f1, why not? Uh -huh. I guess I would have to play something like this. And uh, something like that happened in the game. Here the problem is, again, that black's rook is, is very active. It's, it's difficult for white to progress. I can put the rook on d2, for example. And it's not so easy for white to, to progress anymore. The pawn cannot move. And also, if the king gets closer, uh, the pawn is attacked. So, yeah, I think there are many ways to, to make a draw here. But this is more or less the kind of position that we're looking for in the game. We're a pawn down, but we're very active. And we're very happy that the pawn is on h4. Sorry, I have to repeat this again. If the pawn was not on h4, white could probably make progress by bringing in the king and slowly try to, you know, improve, improve their pieces. But now that's not possible. All right. What happened in the game? Rook before, Fedosev played in, instead of rook c5, he played here king f1. Yeah, that's what I had in the quiz, I guess. And after rook a2, rook c5, a4, rook takes c5, a3. We had exactly this kind of position. Uh, Fedosev tried rook a5, and here was the move that I was talking about, f5. Very smart move, giving space and uh, getting space. And also, whenever white would like to play f3 and e4, black will like soften up their pawns, and it will be easier to attack those pawns later on. But uh, yeah. Uh, white is a long way from making progress here. The game went something like this. Uh, D5, G5, Karyakin continued to, to gain space and White was never able to, to win the game. Uh, I mean, they could have tried something like F3 also, but I guess in that case you can give check and you can just give check again. And It's not easy at all to progress with White. Uh, as far as I can see, it's difficult to progress here. Maybe we could just wait, make like a waiting move here, right? 
So if they play something like e4, uh, their pawns start to become a little exposed, right? You could play something like rook dd2 or rook e2. Which one would be best? Rook d2, maybe. Yeah. So I guess, again, it's very hard for white to, to win this game. Black is very happy to uh, to have that uh, active rook on the second rank. Please, uh, good manners in the chat. Don't speak about uh, irrelevant things. You, you can maybe meet later on in some other classroom and you can chat how much as you like. But right now, let's focus on chess instead, okay? So, so far we understood here, rook b4 is the right way to go. We get, give up the pawn. We make sure that we have counterplay with our active rook. All right, now let's have a quick look at the other options here. Rook b6 which would be like a passive defense. Rook b6, passive defense. The problem with this move, what do you think is the problem? Anyone, what do you think white would play here? How should white progress? We talked about this the other time. We talked about opening a new front, right? Some of you might remember that, uh, that lesson. So we were saying that once we have like some front here to work on, these weak pawns, but it's not enough. Black is defending. We should try to um, find a new uh, front. Okay, Amazon, you're right. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead, Amazon. What's your move? Where is the new front? Oh, I think that's too too clever. Uh, I'm not forced to take, you know. I'm not forced to take and let you have that passed pawn. I could play something like queen e2. It's the move which some people are saying. But I think this is a very good occasion for queen e2. Uh, black is helped by this. I mean, if you play something like e5, I can maybe play rook b2, and I'm already fairly active here. So, no, e4 is not the idea, I think. Um, we were saying that this pawn is useful for restricting the white king in the rook endgame, right? However, after queen c5, very strong move. You can see what white is after. They are tying down black pieces to the defense of these pawns, and at the same time, they are exactly Amazon. They are preparing queen e7. So I don't know how black is supposed to defend here. It's not easy, no? It's not easy to find a single move. I can play something like queen a7 to prevent it, but as you can see, white could now try to prepare in some way, aha, something like queen d6, and we can get a little closer. We have some move coming up here also. The pawn might be hanging and so on. It's not easy to see how to uh, defend with black. I'm not claiming that white is, has a forced win here. I'm just saying that black's task remains difficult. And the reason is that this is a pawn that white can attack. If it wasn't for that, probably black would be okay here. They could play something like queen b7. And if queen uh, e5 check, you can just play something like king g8, I guess. And nothing is going on. But here, white is going to, to win this pawn in some way, I think. Maybe they can play something like queen d8 instead. And if rook b1... Well, I'm not 100% sure, but this is one possibility, right? Take and play king h2. And uh, sometimes you can take this pawn, sometimes you can take that pawn. If you're able to take that pawn, of course, the a pawn will be very strong. So, Troy Boy says rook b4 is worse, but might transpose. Uh, how do you mean, Troy Boy? Uh, oh, you mean rook before here? Oh, I, I see. But now I think I'll go for an attack here. I go for an attack now. Now I'm I'm the one attacking. I'll take the pawn and I'll try to hit the black king. So I guess, yeah, that's why it's worse. Exactly. Yeah, because now my queen is very active. So rook c4, I can play something like rook b1. Please notice that now the new front is the black king. We're playing 100% against the black king. So I think... Uh, Kariaki's move rook before was very well timed, very well timed just before white was able to uh, bring in the pieces and attack. I mean, now you can see the difference here. If they play like this, I guess, yeah, what would you play with black here? Anyone? Exactly. We should just defend the pawn. Mega Charles Rex, you got it. Rook C4 and yeah, tempo up and black is fine. So, yeah, I think that's the correct way to, to look at this endgame. Uh, black is in some trouble. It's better to give up a pawn in order to activate your pieces than to sit with the passive pieces, tying up your pieces to the defense of your pawns, letting white go for some kind of, of counterattack. All right. Uh, next example. 
same topic, but this one is more difficult. I should warn you that our next example is slightly more complex. So if you can defend black in our next example, you're probably a very good endgame player. If you can find this quickly in two minutes, then definitely uh, endgames should be one of your greatest skills. Because in this game, black was not able to save it. They didn't find the right plan in the game. All right, so black to play and save themselves in this difficult endgame. Okay, black to play and hold. All right, let's give you two minutes for this mission. Uh, who was black? In this game, we have with white pieces, Krivo, I think Grandmaster from Czech Republic, maybe, or Poland, sorry, I'm not 100% sure. Mikrut with the black pieces. So take your time, guys, take your time. This is a tricky one. It's easy to get it wrong. I can see several students are already sending moves. You shouldn't do that. You should take your time. All right? Yeah, so far we have four different uh, suggestions and none is working, I'm afraid. Yeah, I get the point, uh, Hacker Guru, Royale and Amazon, but it's not going to work, you know. I'll take the pawn and I'll approach my king to your eight pawn, okay? You will, you will keep material balance, but you're doomed because my king is uh, approaching the eight pawn, okay? Uh, I get the point, a strategic simmer is the HS Quacky Blue Ocean, but my king is very close to the, to the B pawn, right? Yeah, I knew this was a difficult one, so nobody has found it so far. Aha. Uh -huh. And in the game, they didn't find it either. <laughs> difficult, no? Rook and games. One of the most difficult parts in chess, I would say. And it comes up all the time. It's one of the most frequent uh, endgame types, right? Yeah, bad news. Nobody is close. Okay, J JM Chess, you got it. You're very, very close. I am happy for you. You should just uh, adjust the rook's angle, right? Um, there is a better place for that rook. So definitely, we have we have a winner on this one. Uh huh. Only okay, the human person also. You were close, but JM Chess, you you got really close. So please go ahead, uh, JM Chess, and show us. How is your variation? Rook f3, but why on earth is the rook going there? It's not attacking anything. What, what might be the reason? Let's see. If I take this pawn, uh, JM Chess. Yeah, yeah, they got it, they got it. Okay, please go ahead, uh, JM Chess. What was your idea? Why did the rook go to f5? Hurry up, hurry up. Yeah, I don't know what happened. JM Chess, yeah, now... Now he played rook f5. Please notice, I mean, this is very simple, simplistic, but once the kings are placed like this, it's often a good idea to give check. No, they cannot improve anymore. All right, please continue, JM Chess. Exactly, we target this pawn, and we are very close to, to making a draw here. If rook takes, you can see for yourself, we can safely take that pawn, and white is unable to attack this pawn with the king, because we will just continue to harass them with Checks, right? Yeah, that's exactly how you should play. Uh, just harass them with checks. White won't be able to progress here. Aha, you could even think about perhaps rook b3 at some point. Yeah, so I thought of that, but I thought it was losing. Why did you think it was losing, Amazon? I mean, this is not religion. You have to have some scientific uh, uh, beliefs, no? You, ha you have to see some variation. Why do you think it's losing? I mean, endgames are tricky. You can be pawned down, but you can be perfectly safe. Uh, okay, you forgot about the checks. I see. Yeah, this is important to understand. Sometimes our best choice in worse endgames is just to harass them with checks. But let's have a look at what happens if we take the other pawn instead, okay? Let's say we take the other pawn. That should be more critical, right? So, please go ahead, uh, JM Chess. Continue your variation, please. Or that's where you got it wrong. No, please remember, kings opposing each other. White would love to play rook g7. We should... Do the same thing with black, right? 
Aha, we should play rook f5. You're right, Amazon. That's the right move. It's very, very important to try to move away the white king before it goes further. Please notice that this is the pawn which white would like to uh, bet on in this endgame. So, king e4, anyone? What to play now? Exactly, Amazon. You're right. Rook h5. We're targeting this pawn. And also important, we are keeping control of the fifth rank so that the white king cannot cross it. So, White doesn't have many constructive moves here. I mean, we could play rook g4, but you can guess for yourself what uh, we should play here. Oh, Mega, you already posted this variation. Sorry. Rook h8. Why do you play rook h8? I don't follow. Uh, no need to, right? Your rook is in the perfect place. Uh, who was black? Yeah, you can see the title, I hope, in the window. Kribble with white and Mikrut with the black pieces. Uh, Kribble, I think, a grandmaster. Uh, Mikrut, I'm not sure. So anyway, no matter who was playing here, uh, what's a black play, anyone? If our rook is well placed, what does that mean? Yeah, that we shouldn't move it. King e7 says Amazon. Okay, uh, I guess I would play like Titan says. I would play King d6 instead. And it's very hard for white to make progress. Okay, I could try this little move, uh, but it's not serious, no? What would you guys play? Yeah, okay, nobody fell in my my silly trap, right? Nobody fell. So rook e5, of course, uh, king f4, and uh, I guess you won't fall in my other trap either, right? Don't get tricked. Yeah, yeah, nobody falls in my trick. Exactly, you can take with the rook here. And yeah, black should make a draw. After all, material is almost equal. I mean, it's equal, sorry. And uh, yeah, you know, sometimes, I mean, if, if white plays something like, like this, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. We can sometimes sac sacrifice for this pawn in the end and make sure that our king can move up and so on. This would be a draw. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, back to the beginning. We saw the right solution here. The only way to save black is this move, rook f3. We should play rook f5, put the rook on h5. Uh, but we had very few students who understood this. What did you guys look at? Well, some people were saying a5. I understand the idea. Some kind of creating a pass pawn and so on. Unfortunately, our pieces are not well placed for this purpose. I can take the pawn, and as you can see for yourself, uh, this is not good for black. They cannot trade this pawn for one of white's pawns, which would be ideal, but it's not possible because I can just defend this one and I'll take that one. And yeah, we should win. Uh, G5, how is that G5? Oh, Troy Boy says, I was thinking about A5, pawn takes, and B4. Yeah, very pretty idea, but I guess the material relation is not favoring you here would i play well you made me think here i should probably take the pawn right and you play b3 well anyone with a sharp tactical vision uh can you see what's going on here i understand your idea troy boy if i play rook b6 you can take and you can go and take that pawn right so maybe i made a mistake here right i should have played maybe a6 no a6 is, is, is a very bad idea right i would then drop my rook so what would you play here? Rook. Wow, interesting. Uh, new try. Rook takes. You have to play b3. And I mean, this is what I the first move I would think of. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there is some dark side to this. If I bring in the king, maybe. Is that possible? King c4. Yeah, I guess that's a good move. Exactly. Yeah, excellent thinking by Mega Charles Rex. Yeah, I think so. So if b2, we can play rook b6, and they are not able to pick up that pawn. Yeah, they can pick up one of the pawns, but they cannot pick up both because we're just in time to, to protect it, right? Or what do you think? Or maybe I'm very passive here. Can, can black make a draw here? Mm, I don't know, really. <laughs> maybe they can, right? It's still a draw, says Amazon. Yeah, I'm starting to think the same thing. So, guys, what are we missing here? What are we missing? Yeah, we have to work this out. What about a5? Troy's idea. a5, pawn takes, and b4. Is this really a draw? Careful that black is threatening to take the pawn. Rook takes, and b3. Well, don't forget to have some intermediate check. I don't know if it's good for anything. Uh, hard to believe that black can save themselves here. Rook b6. But we looked at rook b6 already. Rook, rook b6, rook takes a5, and we pick up the pawn, right? a6, b2, rook b6. a6, b2, 
Rook B6. Yeah, Rook takes A6 and isn't it the same story? Oh, but now the king is, now we should give this check, I think, right? We drive away the black king first. Then we pick up the pawn. Yeah, this I like much more. And we play Rook H2, is that so? This looks much more promising, right? Black is bust. I don't know. If, if you say so, I'm not, end games are never easy, but I guess this one looks very promising for, for white. Yeah, this one looks very promising. I can bring in my king then. Aha. All right. So uh, a5, very smart idea, but unfortunately it's not really working. Rook h3, some people are saying that's how the game went. I'm sorry. This is not a good idea. It's not a good idea because now uh, we get, we win the pawn, but the check against the white king will come one move later. So let's see how the game went. Okay. They played here. Rook takes g6, rook takes h4 and simply king c5. So now you can see for yourself, the check comes one move too late. Uh, white can play d5 or they can even play if they like king b6 they're getting at this pawn but d5 looks looks nice right to play rook g7 or even take the pawn so yeah black is lost here they tried in the game rook h1 but it's uh, yeah it, it's over now it's over because yeah two pawns or two pawns right uh, just for the record no just for the record uh, B and D will always win. It's not like C and A, right? C and A will make a draw very often, but it's because the A pawn is a rook pawn, and these are not rook pawns. So, yeah, difficult uh, exercise, no difficult exercise. But I think the best way to understand this actually is looking at the kings. Whenever the kings are placed like that, both sides would just love to give a check uh, from the side. White would love to give a check like this or that, and black would love to give a check from that side. And the only way to achieve that is by playing this move, rook f3. You give up a pawn, you end up being a pawn down. However, you're very active here. And that's, after all, the important thing in this endgame. All right, so we have seen here a few cases where you play in an anti-materialistic way and you're able to save the game. And to finish off today's uh, little class, I would like to show you the opposite situation where you're playing for a win and you play in an anti-materialistic way in order to win the game. So we'll start uh, this last part with a game by one of the strongest players in the US. And uh, I know also he's doing great lectures here at uh, the USCS, um, Sam Shankland. So here we go with this very nice end game where we have with the white pieces uh, Shankland and playing black is Sviertz. All right, you're playing with the white pieces. Try to find the best way in which we can win this game with the white pieces, all right? I'll just quiz you for two moves. I think that, that would be enough, okay? Here we go. Let's go, Shankla. Yeah. How did white uh, win this game? Which is the smartest way to progress here? Remember, bishops of opposite color, they can give a drawish uh, tendency to the endgame. We, we should be careful. All right, good work by Royale, Hacker Guru, Eric, Titan Chess, and Mega Charles Rex. That's completely right. I'm looking if somebody plays the wrong move. Okay, so so far nobody played the, the bad move. Okay, that's good. I think you're cured. Nobody is being materialistic anymore. Oh, we had one, no, we had no student. Uh, yeah, I think we have one student, maybe, or maybe not. No, I think that's okay. Uh -huh. Many ways you can win here. Only one way you can really uh, destroy this, uh, this endgame. Uh -huh. But I'm happy that nobody has done that so far. Everybody understood what this is about. Please remember that in opposite color bishops endgames, it's difficult to control the, the color of the opposite bishop, right? Uh, so why should be careful with the blockade on, on the light squares, right? They should be careful not to let black... Uh, create a blockade on the light squares. That would be tragical for white. All right, so I think time is up. Uh, fastest one this time was Royale. Let's see what Royale says about this endgame. How did Sam Shankland take home this endgame? All right, uh, Royale, go for it. F4, we don't have any intention to pick up this pawn. It's not important. We can always control that pawn 
with the with the bishop. Nobody got it wrong, I think, Amazon. I think everybody got it right. So in the game they played here King E8. And uh, you can win in different ways, but that's the nicest way. That's what Shankland played also. Uh, it feels nice to put the pawns on that color, right? Like I was saying, this is the color which sometimes we have difficulties in, in controlling. So it makes sense to put the pawn there from the very beginning. Uh, King F7 was played in the game. And uh, I guess you have studied this, uh, this end game, this kind of end game at, at some point, many of you. So in the game, they just took the pawn and they played G5. Please notice that once the pawns have reached this uh, file uh, rank, sorry, there is no way you can defend. Ideally, you would have the bishop placed on h7. However, even if you get there, you would be lost because you would be put in Zugzwang. I could redirect my bishop to uh, to the long diagonal and I'll put my, I mean, something like this, I'll put my king on f4, I'll put my bishop on uh, f6. Would that make sense? Um, yeah, I mean, it, even if you could get there, you wouldn't uh, be able to make a draw, if I'm not mistaken, because there is no space for you to to move the bishop uh, to to the last rank, if, if you see what I mean. Um, so, yeah. Difficult for black to defend here in the game. They tried bishop h5 and king e5, and black ran out of moves here. Uh -huh. uh, but king takes d4, yeah, king takes d4 is also fine at move 2, You, I hope you mean at move, move 2. You can also play like like, uh, where are we? f4. You can also play king takes d4. Uh, I don't like this by principle because you're forced to play g5, but it works because you're just in time to avoid black's blockade. You're just in time to play here king e5, and if king g6, you have the move bishop e7, and after bishop g4. No, I don't think this works, right? This doesn't work. No, now it's a draw. Now we have firmly blocked white spawns. This is what we should avoid. But I think there was a way in which you could make this work. No, king takes 4 is probably a bad idea. Yeah. Right. So you, yeah, so we had one student who got it wrong. Yeah, okay. Such uh, accidents happen. So actually this is very, very, I didn't think it was so, uh, so bad here, but actually this is, yeah, this throw away is half a point because we're not able to push uh, f5, right? Or did I get it wrong? I think I got it wrong. We have to start with anyone anyone who understands this better than me. I think we're still winning, right? We play f5. Yeah, so it's probably okay. Yeah, you, nobody got it wrong. Okay, everything is in order again. But I do think it's nicer the way Shankland played. Just f5, just to move that pawn to f5 from the very, uh, from the very beginning. So, yeah, which is the bad move? By now you know this is the lesson about materialism and anti-materialism, this would be an awful blunder because now definitely black is able to create the blockade that they were looking for. White will never be able to win this endgame because the bishop will come to, to f5. Uh, it will control this long long diagonal, so white can, can never win. Uh -huh. But by the way, if you have this kind of endgame, please remember what we were saying. Um, if your opponent has two pawns like, like this, let's see, e5 and d5. I don't know if I can, could I maybe, let's see if I can make this work. If we bring up this position, let's see here, something like, something like this. Let's see if I can make, if I can improvise here a little. Um, so let's say we have this position. Let's see, I should play black to move next. Did, did I play black? Can I, can I move the bishop? Can I move my pieces? Yeah, I can move my pieces. So, anyone, what should black play here in order to make a draw? Which is the correct place for the bishop? Anyone? Bishop d3? I don't think so. I think you lose the game if you play like that. Uh, I'll then play e6. Yeah, most people knew about this. Now you're lost, I think. This is not the right angle. Now I can move away my bishop and I'll... Probably I'll put the bishop the other way, right? And I'll bring in the king. So, uh, yeah, that's not the right way to go. So, Hacker Guru says bishop e5, Torich chess says bishop a6. Exactly, that's the way to play. So this is what I was trying to say. You should always try to put the bishop on the diagonal where it controls both pawns. And you should make sure that you have one uh, rank for your bishop, right? If I play some move, if I try to, to create a Tsukswang here, you should be able to play, if I play something like, let's say, king g5, it's important that you have the move bishop d7. Uh, 
not bishop e5 because yeah bishop e5 is also correct uh, Tori. you can also play that yeah and you just bring the bishop to e7 right so both are fine yeah the important thing is to grasp the whole idea you should not think that okay i'm safe because whenever they play e6 i'll just sack my bishop and it's a draw that's not how it works because white can use their king in clever fashion they can move away the king this way on the other hand if you put your bishop this way the nice thing about this is that you tie up the white king to the defense of the pawn so this is yeah this is good to know it's not happening in every game with this end game but it's good to know anyway this was never about to happen happen in uh, sam shanklin's game because already um, from the very beginning he made sure that uh, he would cross the pawns to the fifth rank and like we were saying if you ha would have the bishop on the other side i think you're lost because uh, yeah, with the pawn here, I mean, you're lost because you don't have a waiting move. So it's very important to have this waiting move. All right, I'll bring up the last uh, last example. But okay, maybe I, I should still refresh your memory on this one, right? Refresh your memory. Um, just remember, don't take that pawn. Don't take that pawn. This pawn should wait. This would be horrible uh, mistake, endgame blunder to take that pawn because black is able to create a blockade along the light squares. So please make sure that you start with f4 and quickly put your pawns on the fifth rank. No way in which black can defend now. Uh, they can simply not, it's not possible to, to bring the pieces. Oh, you know, if you play bishop h7, this would be the situation that I was uh, thinking of. So here you can see clearly that if you would be able to play something like, I'm just showing like, like an example, no? If you're able to Put your pieces like this still you would be lost because you don't have the move bishop i8 right bishop i8 you don't have that move it doesn't exist that square so you're lost here right because uh you end up without the moves i can play something like uh, bishop d2 maybe i can play bishop h6 and i'm slowly but safely forcing black into some kind of zook swing or i hope so at least or what do you guys think did i mess it up I don't think so, right? I can play something like this and then I can play uh, g5. I should just make sure to play g5 when you cannot move the king. Or did, I, did this become too complex? Uh, <laughs> anyone who is still uh, awake, uh, help me out. g5, king f7, bishop h8, says Hacker Guru. All right, so if I play king g8, you play g6, is that so? All right, nice. I like your variation. Yeah, very clever, very clever. All right, this was a nice little twist to, to this endgame. All right. Yeah, this seems to win. Aha. Uh -huh. So black is suffering heavily from this uh, space uh, problem. Okay, nice. Nice little combination. Let's have a look at our, I think it's our last example for today. Yeah, uh, let's have a look at no one less than world champion Magnus Carlsen with white pieces. Uh, let's see if I can bring this up somehow. Our last example. Uh, it's the same topic. We are ahead in material. It's an opposite color bishops endgame, but this time we also have rooks on the board. Okay. Perhaps you're familiar with this endgame. Some kind of, I think, Karo Khan structure. Uh, we're playing with the white pieces here. I would like to know which is the best way to go here with the white pieces. All right. I'm mostly interested in the plan, in the plan itself. Uh, which plan do you think we should use here? So I'll only ask you for two moves in this position. So 130. Yeah, I would say it's a little tricky. Yeah, I think it's a little tricky. Okay, Titan Chess, you got it in three seconds. Uh, you must be a fan of Magnus Carlsen, like many of us, because you found it so quickly. Hacker Guru, that's right. Uh, Tori Chess, that's a reasonable move, but I know what I would play. I'll play Rook C8, uh, Tori Chess. Rook C8, and I'll try to push C5. That's, that goes for you also, HDI Chess. I'll try to push C5. That's my main priority here. All right? So, Titan Chess and Hacker Guru, so far, you're the only ones who found what Carlson played in the game. Um, interesting move, which uh, it's proposed by Tori Chess, HDI Chess, JM Chess, Eric, the human person, Google Chess. Um, I guess I would play Rook C8 there. Yeah, you can think about that while we're waiting for the rest. I'll play Rook C8 and I'll try to push C5 no matter what you play. Okay. 
If that makes a draw, I don't know, but I guess it's my best try here. Strategic Simmer and Blue Ocean, you played exactly the move that <laughs> I didn't want you to play. But okay, I understand. You win a pawn, that's that's good for you. Uh, pick a two, if I play c5, I block you on the door squares. Do you think you can re really win that? I don't think so. That's probably a mistake, uh, your move. And Quacky, I can always play King f8, right? If I like against that move. Or Rook c8, like we were saying. All right, so let's listen to Star Pawn. Okay, Star Pawn, you got it. What would you play with the white pieces here? Exactly. C4, that's what Carson played in the game. He didn't think about material so much this time. He knew that he could take a pawn on C6. We'll come back to that. C4 was played in the game. Black played Rook C8. You can see what they're going for here. Exactly, like Titan Chess is saying, we have to fix that weakness on c6. That's the right way of thinking here. We are leaving black with a weakness. Bishop e7, and here there were different ways to play. I guess the most natural move would be to play rook b1. However, Carlsen reckoned that he was in no hurry here, and he just played king f1. Let's see very quickly how the game continued, and then we'll come back to the initial position. So f5, Carlsen simply brings up the king. Zhu uh, Zhangyi tries to create counterplay on the king side. H3, no reason to let them play g4. King g7, let's bring up the king. Please notice that the black rook is tied all the time to the pawn, so that's why they don't play rook b8 or anything. King g6 and rook b1. So basically, that's how Carson proceeded. He activated his rook. You can see that it would like to go to b7. If black plays rook c7, we could play rook b8 with new tasks for our rook. White has a clear advantage. Please notice that they're never in any hurry to play d5. We should use that move at the very end because it's very useful for us to attack the pawn on c6. Also, you can see that we have this bad majority, right? Like a bad majority, not so easy for black to create past pawn. Now, what about other moves? Just like Titan Chess is saying, if bishop takes c6, there is rook c8, and after d5, black could play bishop c5. Are you sure about that, by the way, Titan Chess? Don't I have d6 here? Or that doesn't matter? Maybe it doesn't matter, no? Th that's what you mean, right? Because this is not uh, working for, for black. Aha. Uh -huh. So I think your idea is right, but uh, it's not necessary to play bishop c5. You already blocked the uh, pawn. I think it's better to play rook b8 here. You're right, uh, Titan says, maybe king f8. But I think this is even stronger because now actually the black rook is the rook which will become more active in, the, in this position. And please notice that if you play something like rook e1, I could play like g6, and if rook e8, it's not obvious at all that white can win this, no? Because it's, after all, opposite color bishops. I have some kind of nice blockade here, right? I can play bishop c5, and I can play king e7, and it's not so easy for white to progress. So it's a mistake to play bishop uh, takes c6. I think even the engine was saying that it, it doesn't like this move, even though it cashes in a whole pawn, simply because black is able to fix the white pawns on, I mean, that pawn on, on the light square. So they have activity. White cannot get in easily the move c4, c5. I can put my rook on b2 maybe and put my bishop on c5 at some point. It will become much more difficult to win here. Um, which other move were you saying here? Um, was there any other suggestion? No, I don't think so. d5, somebody said d5. I'm afraid this is another strategical mistake. I would then play the move c5, right? Yeah, d5 is not a good idea, <laughs> right? Because now you let me block the whole position on the rook b1. I guess I could just play rook b8, right? I'm happy to swap uh, rooks here. After all, I'm on the defending side. So if I can get to opposite color bishops, I should make a draw here. So yeah, uh, nice move, right? Nice move, fixing pawns. That's a whole uh, story, no? That's a, that's a separate subject in endgames. Fix your opponent's pawns on the uh, right color so that you can attack them later on. We have to play this as soon as possible. Somebody said rook b1 here. I, I forgot who said that. I mean, it's it's a reasonable move to play rook b7, but I think black could play then rook c8. Is that so? Well, that was what I was thinking about. I don't know if this works, but at least uh, we are creating some, some counterplay here. Uh, is that so? Or would you like to play rook b8? Is that possible? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. This is probably winning for for white. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll bring in the king and 
we might be able to push those pawns forward. Is that so? Yeah, interesting question. I don't know. But uh, in any case, much more clear cut what Carlson played c4. Before black has a chance to play c5, we fix that pawn as a weakness, and black will be tied up uh, for the rest of the game to that pawn. And we can simply bring up our king like Carlson did to protect his pawn and later on play rook b1. So very important not to be greedy in the end game. Don't take that pawn. It will give black some chances of, of survival because he's able to force the move d5, else the pawn hangs. So if d5, uh, white is having difficulties in progressing here. Uh, all right. I guess that's uh, that's it for today. Uh, are you tired or uh, would you like one last uh, one last example? Maybe we should call it today. One more says Titan says. All right. So let's bring up one of the most typical endgames with rooks and minor pieces. This is a typical case. It happens all the time. Um, complex endgames. <coughs> Here we have a game with white pieces. Tari, the former uh, under-20 world champion, and playing black is Mendonca. So here we will play with the white pieces. You can see that it's a complex position. Material is equal. However, a lot of things are going on here. You can see that white has a passed pawn, for example. Uh, the, the B file is uh, under dispute. Black is attacking this pawn and so on. So how do you think white should uh, continue in this uh, complex endgame? Yeah, this will definitely be our last, uh, last quiz for today. Why to play and try to get some advantage? I'll say try because with the perfect play, black would be able to save this game. But they didn't make it in the end, in the game. So, okay, up to you guys. Try to find the best way in which white can continue to fight for a win. here. Hint, uh, anti-materialism, okay? I get the point, uh, Eric and Hacker Guru. You were very close, uh, but you can improve that variation. If you play in that way, um, I thought I looked at this the other day. Yeah, what would happen uh, in that case? Let's have a look. Um, Yeah, I think I have a little tactical trick there, Eric, Hacker Guru, Aditya, Tori Chess. I think I can play Bishop D4. And uh, if you take on D4 and on F2, I'll play E3. But it's the right spirit. Okay, we have a whole bunch of winners here. HDI Chess, JM Chess, Alg, and Titan Chess. That's right. Um, that's exactly how the game went. It's not really winning for Black, for White, but it's uh, putting Black into some difficult... Uh, uh, situations. Okay. Kwaki, you got it. Nice work. So, Eric, Hacker Guru, Aditya, Tori Chess, and Mega Charles Rex, you were on the right track. However, I think I have this pretty move, Bishop D4, uh, so that I can play E3, right? Else, uh, this was a good try in the right direction. All right. Interesting move by Star Pawn. Um, what would I play against that? Yeah, good question. What about rook b1, uh, star pawn? Maybe I can pin your bishop, right? Is that making sense? I, I'll give away the pawn on a7, right? Okay, so uh, let's uh, listen to Alg. You're on Alg, which is your solution here with white pieces. Aha, so Alg doesn't spend time on protecting this pawn. Uh, they just give it away. It was tempting to play here. Sorry, uh, just to see this very quickly. Rook f1 is very tempting, but it seems black has this pretty resource, no? Bishop d4 to go e3, and uh, if bishop takes, pawn takes, they can still not take because e3 is coming up. Yeah, some cheap tactics there favoring black. So it's much better to play like uh, Alg is saying, rook fp1. After all, this is an open file. We should fight for the open file. And after bishop takes e3, king takes 
rook takes, rook takes. Black was already faced with some difficulties here because uh, rook p7 is coming up and also white has a dangerous plan like uh, Titan Chess is saying the knight is kind of stuck on f2. So here they made a b bad choice, you know. Yeah, the knight can get trapped, exactly, James Chess. Here they made a bad choice because if you're materialistic, you would say, oh no, they want to play rook b7, I should not lose this pawn. So in the game, they pl played the move rook c8, okay? So that they could meet rook b7 by rook c7. You're right, Titan Chess. Aha, you can save a pawn to lose. Yeah, right, right, right. You're, you're right here, uh, like Titan Chess and Hacker Guru and JM Chess in the chat. Exactly. The knight is never lost. That's not a problem. Look at what happens here. Okay, who, who can play white here? Anyone? Uh, Titan Chess, maybe. You can play the white pieces here. What would white play now? Now this plan does not uh, succeed anymore. So what would you play? Exactly. Now we go for this... Uh, knight to attack the knight. Please notice that in this structure the knight would just love to go to d6. That would be a great square for the knight in this structure. However, it's not possible to get there. In the game they played king d6. You can continue Titan chess. Yeah, this is very simple. The knight uh, has only one square. It can of course not go to h1, then it would be trapped. So they had to play knight e3. So question for you, exactly. I don't even have to ask you. Aha. Uh -huh. Please notice that we, we want the rook endgame. We don't want any other endgame. Okay, also there is knight c1, that's true. So we just take and it's funny because when I saw this position the first time I thought that black should have reasonable chances for a draw. But the more you look at this, the more you understand that it's almost impossible to save black here. It's simply not a good structure in a rook endgame, this structure. It's a good structure when you have some minor piece, uh, bishop or knight on d6 or maybe some piece on d7. Protected passer and control of open file. Yeah, that's right, uh, uh, Titan Chess. I mean, I can also play for the open file, but as you can see, it's not the same thing. Um, the passer is extremely strong. White can sometimes even consider some, you know, pawn endgame. If they can create some progress on the king side, if they can leave black with like one single pawn, they can actually consider to swap. Um, to swap the rooks. However, it's not needed here because you can also attack this pawn. So uh, anyone, what would you play with white here? Any smart way in which we can attack both these pawns? Anyone? Maybe a combined attack at those two pawns? Is that possible? Yeah, Titan chess, you got it. Rook a3, we attack this guy. After rook e7, if black continues with passive play, we can just play rook a6. Exactly. So it's, it's interesting. No, it's interesting. The, it looked kind of drawish, but already black is dead lost here because the next one would rook c6 and then white would have two past pawns, connected pawns, right? So, yeah. Sad, uh, sad case. Sad case for poor black in this game. They played rook c7 and after rook b8, white took the opportunity to, to activate the rook. f5, it's not easy to give black any good advice here. h4, gain some space. g6, rook e8. Here we go. Nasty move coming up. Rook uh, e6. Black avoided that, but where do you think black? Uh, where do you think the white rook went now? Anyone? Yeah, the the ending might be won as soon as you have created progress on the king side. Uh, exactly, uh, hacker guru. So now the time is right. If you play here, rook c seven, you win with white because you already made enough progress. You can just take and you can just walk in the king. Uh, black is dead lost because they're not able to create. A passed pawn on their side. Yeah, you just play like this. You take and king g5 and so on. King is too far away. Yeah, and I mean also the king is busy with with the deep pawn. So yeah, impossible to save black in this end game. Uh, they played in the game rookie four. It's the right spirit, of course, active defense, but it's just a little too late. White went on to win with their uh, connected passed pawns. However, this was not the end of the story. Okay, you already concluded that bishop e2 is the best move for white. Uh, just give up the pawn so that we can quickly grab the open file. Please notice that black was not able to take first because it's unfortunately check on g4, right? So uh, knight takes f2, rook b1. And uh, I just want to show you where black could have saved the game. It's here. Here is the moment. So black played, you could say, in materialistic fashion, rook c8 to keep everything defended. That was not the right choice. The right choice would have been to go for active defense. All right, Titan just says e3. I like the way you're thinking, no? I like your way of thinking, but okay. I'll probably pick up uh, that pawn. 
and you still have some issues. No, I know you can give me a check, but I can approach with my king. I think there is a stronger move for black. Uh, e3 is waste, says Statistics. Yeah, maybe. So uh, there is a better way to play here. If you play in a very dynamic way, uh, you will find uh, you will find out that black is not in trouble here. But you have to play in a very dynamic way. All right, this is our last quiz for, for today. Try to find dynamic way to continue with black, anti-materialistic way in which black can keep the balance here. Keeping the balance, that's black's main goal here. Last quiz for today. Maybe a slightly difficult one, but okay. This is important whenever you're sitting with difficult endgames like this. Okay, JM Chess, you got it basically, no? Uh, you can perhaps improve the move order, but uh, that's exactly how you should proceed here. Uh -huh. The right way of thinking. We're speaking so much about past pawns for white, but what about black's past pawns then? Hacker Guru, that's right, yeah. I wouldn't give up the f4 pawn though, but uh, it's the right spirit, what, what you're saying. Uh -huh. It's the right spirit. So... Uh, yeah, interesting move, uh, 93 also by Torices, RZ 2018, Rook F8. Yeah, that's exactly the right spirit also. I guess there are several ways in which we can progress here, but uh, I think the most precise one would be the one proposed by JM Chess and Titan Chess. All right. Yeah. So, Kugel Chess, the human person and Quoki, you just went back with the king? So why... Did why did you do that? Isn't that a bit passive? I'll play king d2 and king e3, right? Okay, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Mega Charles Rex, I'll, I'll give it to you very soon, uh, the move, just very quickly. If you play king c7, I think this is on the wrong track. I'll play king d2 and I'll play king e3. It's basically like in the game, or what am I missing? You cannot play rook b8, by the way. If somebody thought about this, it's not working, right? I have this tactical trick, cheap tactics to my advantage. So let's listen to Mega Charles Rex. Okay, Mega, what was your idea? Sorry. Yeah, I went back, sorry. Exactly, just push the pawns, right? We don't care about losing a pawn on g7 or a7. We're interested in activity, right? So now if King d2 trying to hit the knight, doesn't make sense anymore, right? Because we have the other pawn to, to help us, exactly, to play e3 and so on. So I can pick up this pawn and you can continue with the same business, f4. So some people were saying here, for example, rook f8 and others were saying king e5. I think all of those are fine, no? It's, it's the same, same idea. But sooner or later, we should probably push the pawn. This is a good moment. Please notice that after rook f7, I'm not forced to trade pawns. I can keep these pawns, right? Exactly. Uh, Mega Charles Rex. That's the right move. So here you can see the game is still very tricky. Uh, I'm not saying that black is better or anything, but it's tricky for white also because whenever the move, the rook moves away, what do you think black would play uh, Mega Charles Rex? What move would you consider here? Which is the most active choice here? Exactly. You can play rook f8 or perhaps even rook g8. Exactly. Targeting the pawn on g2. No matter what happens here, I know we're a pawn down but we have a lot of activity. Don't think of a move like bishop f1. This would be a bad mistake. Mega Charles Rex will punish me here. Right, Mega? You won't miss a chance like this, right? Oh, I see. But I think that is a better move, right? Anyone? Or, or is this the best we can get? Oh, 94. Yeah, but why don't you go the other way, right? This looks very nice. Aha, Quacky, you got it. And then we play 93. This must be very dangerous for for white, right? What I like about this variation is that actually, whenever they give check, where do you think the black king would go? Exactly. So now we're speaking activity. So this is getting worse and worse for white, right? Bishop e2. Let's finish off this variation. Let's see if we can finish it off in a pretty way. Black is winning, says strategic Seymour. Yeah, okay, I'll just... No, but this, is, this doesn't make sense anyway. Yeah. I was thinking that we could play beautifully and just play f3 and go for mate. But okay, you're right. You can just pick up the pawn also. Yeah, so it's. Yeah, white is completely busted here. So you can see what happened. Black activated all their pieces in a very nice way. They didn't care about losing one or two pawns in the way. 
Uh, however, in the game, unfortunately, they played in a very passive way. They played rook c8, and Tari showed that by playing here with white pieces, king d2, followed by king d3, he was able to get into a rook endgame where black was suffering from the bad structure. Aha. If you strategic symbol says, if you calculate it, then f3 is best in the land we just saw. Okay, I'm curious to find out what you mean. f5, rook b7, king d6, rook takes, uh, f4, rook f7, king e5. Uh, please go ahead, uh, strategic symbol. What, what did you mean? Not here. Where then? Where? What if black never takes f2 and goes knight e5? Uh, that's another subject, no? If you can't tell me strategic simmer, I cannot go to the position where d6 happens. Oh, but that's in the very end, right? That's at the very end of this variation. We were looking at king, king e5, rook takes. We were saying rook g8. We were saying, this is what we said, right? Or did I get it wrong? I think I got it wrong, right? This is not how it, how it went. Yeah, this is probably not how it... Anyway, I think we're already uh, about to finish, no? I think it's, the time is up already. So it's clear that here black has great chances. On the other hand, in the game, they played in a very passive way. Uh, they played in a very passive way and uh, they unfortunately lost the game because they didn't think about this active plan. They played passively instead and white was able to, uh, to win the game by, by bringing in the king. And please notice that in, at the beginning, white had no issues whatsoever giving up the f2 pawn. They, they were very happy to play bishop e2 quickly bringing all their pieces to the action. That's what anti-materialistic thinking is about. All right. Thanks a lot for today's lesson. Thanks and see you next time. Merry Christmas to everyone. Bye-bye.